Hello, my name is Richie from Social Raspberry here. It's gonna be a spicy one. So before I begin this video for legal transparency, this video is all my opinion. These are all just allegations. Um, and you can pretty much just slap allegedly in front of every claim that I make in this video. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I wanted to talk about somebody you probably don't know much about. Somebody that has been on national television the past couple months. Um, somebody that is slowly gaining a modest following and somebody that I've known about a decade ago or I've had various encounters with with people in my old friend circle and his name is Brian King Joseph he's a violinist he just finished third place on America's Got Talent a few days ago which is a pretty big deal as I said it's a nationally broadcasted program it's got celebrities like Howie Mandel Heidi Klum uh, Simon Cowell I believe is on it it's a, it's a pretty big deal to get into the top 10 of this show, let alone the top three. And I found this out because I actually saw on the America's Got Talent Twitter, as much as I detest the show, uh, it's very popular. And I saw Brian King Joseph uh, rubbing noses with all these celebrities. I've noticed he's actually gained a platform. And um, I've known Brian since 2010. And the person you're seeing now, the very talented uh, violin player, in front of all these celebrities is not the person that's probably most ideal to be in this position and uh, here here's why Brian was in the opening band to the very first social repose show ever on June 22nd 2011 in his band Skylines he was the violin player I, I had seen him many times before at parties uh, there was a party house called Exodus yes it had a name and it was this kind of legendary it, it was something out of movies like this just a crazy party house every time I went there three or four times I, I attended parties it was just nuts I've never seen anything like it since and it's it was a mix of like high school kids and young college kids so essentially it was it was almost a breeding ground for like older college guys to prey on young high school girls it was pretty gross. That's I was kind of on the outskirts of that friend group. Uh, nobody really liked me that much, but I still showed up. And Brian King Joseph was kind of this notorious figure. He's very charismatic for being very sexually aggressive uh, with the younger girls. Uh, some as young as, I believe, 15. He was in his 20s. Now, the trouble with any kind of sexual assault rape or misconduct or anything of that nature is that if you report it to the court of law and try and get the person tried and convicted it's nearly impossible unless you have like ironclad evidence which is why so many of these sexual predators and all, all the all these people that they 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 get away with this stuff because it's 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 just it's nearly impossible to convict these people then the first social post show happened and i didn't see or hear uh from mr joseph for about four or five years but 2015 we had a facebook kind of spat where essentially he chalked up me having a quarter million subscribers at the time to me wearing a headdress and there was no other reason. He was not very happy about my attire and he was very vocal about it and that's fine. I mean people were back then, people still are now. But bringing this to present day for him being elevated to I, I guess some, sort, some, some form of platform being on television, uh, a lot of the people that he took advantage of are coming forward. I know all of these people. I, I was at the bare minimum acquaintances with all of them and uh, they're coming forward and I saw a Facebook post of the brother of one of the victims and he explained the reasons why he didn't come out with all of this information before um, the, the fact that the victims didn't want to be a part of it which is understandable uh, especially in the court of law you can't convict someone like this legally and it just kind of got swept under the rug until now and since this post, I noticed a lot of people coming forward saying what Brian King Joseph had done to them. I've talked with a lot of them. I don't want to share their screenshots. I don't want to reveal their identity. But let's just say it was way worse and his conduct was way more deplorable than I thought it was. Some of these alleged rapes and misconduct happening as, as little as six years ago. I even found a public post on the front man, the, the, the singer, of the band that opened for me in 2011 coming out against Brian saying that they used to be best friends they were really close he spent a lot of time with the guy he kind of knew 
everything that he was doing and he said that he never quite grew out of it. But he went into detail on what Brian King Joseph has done. Everything from getting young girls drunk to sleep with them all the way up to statutory rape and kind of everything in between. He was just a very sexually aggressive person. And I would have never made a video outing somebody like this in 2015 when we had our little disagreement on Facebook because he didn't have a following. He didn't have a platform to stand on. He didn't have people looking up to him. And now he does, or he's in the infancy stages of doing that. But I'm just saying that from my personal experience, it's, it, it becomes less of a he said, she said thing when I literally saw him hitting on and being sexually aggressive to minors. Uh, back at those parties. I, I've seen it, so I believe all these people. And I'm sure there will be comments on this video saying, but Richie, you're also a horrible person, and you've committed heinous acts, and I am a strong believer, and if you do one thing wrong, short of, like, murder, um, you should have the opportunity to be forgiven for it if it's just a lapse in judgment or if you're going through a phase in your life. But from what I understand, from, from what I've been reading from like the dozens of people that, that I've, I've found on the internet, um, this happened for years. I don't know if it's still going on, but from like 2009 to like 2012 or 13, he did a lot of unspeakable things and he did things that he should be in jail for. But for those of you in the comments who are going to p compare me to him and say you have no right to call out a uh, sexual abuser, let's be very clear here. Yes, I have cheated on my girlfriends. I wear a headdress that is polarizing that some find offensive. That doesn't hold a candle to pedophilia. That doesn't hold a candle to rape. That doesn't hold a candle to sexual assault. Okay? So to close out this video, if you'd like to let America's Got Talent no, if you'd like to let the judges on the panel know that they are associating with someone of this stature, um, by all means, please do. Please share this video. Let everyone know that it's not okay for a giant, massive national television show like America's Got Talent to support a person that is a sexual abuser, that is a alleged rapist, and somebody that just really shouldn't be in the entertainment industry and have people looking up to him. And that's all I have to say about that. Stay sad, but not too sad, and I'll see you in the next one.